Hello, David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. I am so excited. It's not even because of the subject matter. Um, I am here with the new king of cool in the Bond community. I'm here with none other than Harris Thomas of Dressing Like Bond. Harris, welcome back. COVID, COVID elbows. Okay, COVID elbows. all right, we hey, can man. do that. I like that. Thanks like... for having me back. It's well, been, I feel like it's been forever. It's been forever, but... First of all, this is so nice because most of my discussions with people have been through Skype, but I've been very careful. You've been very careful in Pennsylvania. We can do these things as long as we have 50 people or less in the house. And certainly there's two people in this house. So we're we're still obeying all the good do, guidelines. Do props count? Because we're well over 50 down here. It's it, it They don't, okay. happily. Thank so God. Thank God. I think we're good to go. And I'm, I'm excited about the subject matter, but... There, there might be a few people, and I mean one or two out there, that don't know who you are. So I want to start with introductions and why I'm so excited. First of all, uh, Dressing Like Bond, uh, you know, really your Instagram page itself is about you living the Bond lifestyle with fashion, clothing, accessories, drinks. How was it born? Like, where did it come from? Yeah, you know, I... I'm thankful that I get to work every day uh, and dress up. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I wanted to literally dress like Bond every day. Um, it was kind of a corny name Simple. that I started a few years ago and uh, stopped it. And then, you know, a few friends, Joe Darlington, Ray, and yourself, uh, kind of forced me to push me over the edge uh, or whip me into shape and uh, <laughs> told me to get on it. So I got on it, and uh, here we are. You know, we're almost at 10,000 followers, believe it or not. It's been two years. And, uh, yeah, I dress uh, like James Bond every day. Um, you know, try to incorporate my daily lifestyle uh, in clothing uh, in the James Bond world. Uh, a lot of t-shirts these days, but, um, you know, hey. I don't see many t-shirts on your channel. Well, you see more t-shirts on my channel than you do Bond suits. Well, you'll never see t-shirts on Matt Spazer's channel. Another story. All right, so we need to actually poke some holes into what I call um, just some things that are out there that might be uh, rumors or truth. That's kind of where we are. So, so rumor or truth, um, you are from South Carolina. Rumor. You're from North Carolina. And I thought all the Carolinas were the same. It's, oh, no. So oh, you are from no. North is Carolina. Is all Jersey the same? I don't know. Yes. Is all Pennsylvania the same? Yes. No. Yeah, no. You're asking you, the wrong person. North Carolina, South Carolina. That's like the difference between Sheriff J.W. Pepper and Roger Moore. I don't know geography south of uh, Baltimore, so I apologize. <laughs> all right. Second, second uh, uh, <laughs> rumor or truth. Um, you are a um, uh, descendant a direct descendant of Sheriff Pepper. I am. I am. I okay. am. He is my uh, great great father. Yeah. I didn't even know there was a great. I guess if you really think your father's great, it's a great great father. Well, you see, it, David, it all depends on whose side oh, are I you like on. That. Do me a do me a little sheriff. Let me hear a little sheriff. What are you? Some kind of doomsday machine, if, boy. If, if I close my eyes, it's like he's oh. alive again. Oh. It, I just got, I got chills. Like the wrong parish, boy. I, not good chills. Ooh. All right. So, so yeah. the last one, and this is this is probably the biggest one, but we, I'm gonna settle it now before we even get to the subject matter. Is in No Time to Die. Obviously, we have Safin as the main bad guy. Yeah. There was rumor that before he was cast that you had gone for several discussions with Barbara Broccoli um, as a young Hugo Drax to resuscitate that character. True or false? It's very true. And I'll tell you this. I really got excited. Um, but, you know, they put a plate of cucumber sandwiches in front of me and they said that I had to eat it to get the roll. And for uh, the few of you that actually know me, uh, I wasn't going to be able to do that and um, because you only eat fried food. only eat fried food and french and, fries in particular and you know i big i'm a big believer in standing up for your values and i you know eating a cucumber sandwich is just not on my uh, not on my palate so they, they couldn't come to terms with no. your contract so you know then as i was walking out i i passed uh, mr robot and uh, gave him a good 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 pat on the yeah. shoulder and said good luck buddy so Fre yours. Freddie Mercury said, easy come, easy go, meow, meow, meow. Something like that. Something all right, like that. All right, yeah. good. Well, but you've been good enough to come here today here. because I love it in the Bond community when boys with toys share their toys. And you've received something today we're going to show you. Whew. And I tell you what, I was excited for you to get it, but then you started to roll out 
this is the Omega Aquaterra. And, and you said, you know, David, it's not in one, not in two, but three Daniel Craig films, which I didn't even know that. It is the true unsung hero of the Daniel Craig era. Will, will you open it for us? I will, David, but if you don't mind. No, Thank please you. do. Thank you. And we're going to get a nice hero shot. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Ooh, see, it's real. It wow. Kind of shifted. Okay, I'll just, we're oh. going to, don't worry, we're going to get up nice and close and personal with this. We'll leave this right here so we can talk to it for now. Look at that blue dial. We got to start off with some basics as we're yeah. looking at this. Obviously, there's a lot of watches out there. You, you make a nice income. And what, first of all, tell us the journey. A decision to buy another yeah. Bond watch and why this one in particular. Yeah, so, Take us through that. So a couple of years ago, I got my first Omega, right. uh, Planet Ocean from Quantum. Um, came into a, a, you know financial means to be able to get one. And I kind of really fell in love with watches at that point. I never really cared about watches. I yeah. felt like I had to have an Omega to feel like I was part of the club. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. when you get it, you do feel like you're part of the club. There is a club that you get to be on the watch shots, you know, and at events and stuff, That's... you know, when everyone puts their wrists together. <laughs> um, but... Then I really decided I really liked watches and started learning more about watches. Um, you know, shout out to Lorenzo at yeah. Omega Bond Watches. Um, you know, really have learned a lot about watches and wanted to get one. And I decided that I was going to get one this year after a really good year last year, uh, work wise. Then the world happened. <laughs> That's it. Um, three weeks away still from, ooh, ooh it still hurts. Um, so I, I decided that I wanted a watch. And right. I thought I was going to go after the OG Seamaster. Oh, automatic, you know, tomorrow never dies, oh, and yeah. on. That's what yeah. I wanted. Yeah. But I'm going to be honest with you. This is more me. This is more of what I've always wanted. Yes. It was always a price tag that I just didn't know if I want to spend or not. And then when I saw that it was in No Time to Die, we already knew it was in Skyfall, and then it was also in Spectre that no one ever talks about, I decided this was a watch for me. Yeah. And so this is not the first watch I bought, though, because I bought the first Aquaterra, bought it online, Reputable dealer. Yeah. Won't mention their name. I'm really excited. I'm getting FedEx overnight shipping. I got my tracking number that next morning. You could taste it. 4.30, I get a call. Oof. Mr. Thomas, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but that ad, we sold that watch months ago. We just oh. hadn't taken that ad down. So I'll tell you, if that isn't a description of 2020 for not only <laughs> everyone and Harris Thomas himself in dumpster life. Dumpster fire. Dumpster fire. Yeah, um, yeah. Just when things are burning, you get more fire thrown on. But, but, did that, but did that punch you down for the count? No. I said, damn it. We can cuss on this channel. I said, damn it. Yeah, you can. I'm going to go find another watch. So I found another watch. This is the one. Better one. Better one. Better condition. Comes with this beautiful box you see here. Yeah, yeah. And... You know what? It arrived 24 hours later, and here we are. All right. So before ah. you get into initial reactions, what you think of it so far, and even I do want to talk about specifically where this falls within the movie. We'll show some cutscenes. First of all, tell us a little bit about the watch itself. Do you know any of the stats I on did. it, the size? I did. I did. All right. So hear. you want to start with this one? You want to start Skyfall? We're going to work our way there. Well, actually, tell me, tell me the stats right. about the watch itself. This is this is the Aquaterra, 150 yeah. meter. Okay. Okay. 41.5 millimeters. Nice size. Larger size, a little bit smaller than the Planet Ocean. Yeah. Um, and it's got a 60 hour power reserve, so mm -hmm. you know you cannot wear it, and it'll run for 60 hours. Um, it's got polished center links, which you'll see in the photos that we put up here in a little bit. Um, that's what makes this bracelet different. Is that in Spectre and on they now Omega makes it with the polished center bracelets. Um, got a set, you know, sapphire crystal front, blue dial, vertical. I like the the vertical mm. um, indentions. I call vertical lines. They're like running. slats or shadowings yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. It's, it's yeah. incredible. Looking at this dial is just yeah. you mesmerized. Um, and then the new models today have the the date, the date at the six. Oh, this is at the three. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? Which do you prefer? I prefer that. I, just I do can't too. Ever admit. I always look to the right. To me, it seems almost uncanny and askew to yeah, have it weird. at the six. Yeah. Um, hmm. And yeah, I mean, it, it for me, it's the perfect size. Yeah. Um, a lot of people think I should have gone for the smaller size, but, um, you know, I'm the one buying, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of knowing what Harris likes. So <laughs> I went with the 41 and a half. All right, do us a favor. Yeah. Take take this, put it on. You've probably put. been dying. It's like, why is it sitting in a case? I know. See, here's the Bond experience. They make you not wear your watch. 
They do, actually. They do. It's a very it's, it's, it's but, a tough house. But the bracelet, though. I mean, just that clasp. I know it's going to be very hard to see in the camera. We're, we're actually we'll, going to get hero shots, we so we'll but it's just, just talk about it and we'll put it up there. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. But no, the bracelet is great because it's a different clasp. So you have yep. it's got a little bit of a different fold. It's a little like more of a oh, yeah. true like folding clasp, and then it's got the you know the Omega logo there. Um, and I mean, gorgeous. Yeah. All right, so Dude. talk to me because I, I love I collect these stories. Yeah. I think you all do too as well. So the watch comes in, you unwrap it. Is it is it love right away? Does it have to grow on you? What what are, what's going through your mind? It was just like I, I was mesmer. I keep saying this. I was mesmerized by the dial. Um, Lorenzo again at Omega Bond Watches had told me that when you see that dial, it's going to have so many different shades of blue. You won't understand. <laughs> I didn't believe him at all. It looked blue. Like it looks gray right now, but yeah. then it's blue. It, it's incredible. It's stunning. There's so much elegance and class to this, um, and it's really a dress watch that I didn't have. Mm, um, that's true. And so I can, you know, keep a NATO on my planet ocean, or leave the stainless steel strap and and whatever. But I, yeah. I I'll always leave this bracelet on this watch. I think um, it's a it, very. You know what I think? It's interesting because obviously at forty one point five, it's a good size. Yeah. It still looks like it's a it's a utility piece, yeah. but it has a certain elegance with that face. And I said this earlier to you. I think it's more you because you yeah. are that you've got a certain elegance around the way you dress. I mean, I'll see you wear jeans and sports jackets when everybody else is wearing like shorts and a t shirt. Hello. So you you do have that kind of dressier sense about you yeah and i mean it's it's i've i've wanted a dress watch and and i finally have that i mean i've always yeah. dressed up the planet ocean you know i got that melanie's uh bracelet yeah like, kind of no cool. time to die and so I, I i i like this it gives me yeah. now more flexibility and now i'm addicted and so you know, it, it's funny i have to do uh, tell you when i i do this kind of analogy when when somebody gets a new watch especially something like that that has all these beautiful colors on it it's that whole idea of like when a woman gets an engagement ring and she's looking at the diamond and oh. just how it sparkles. I think guys are like that and probably women too with their watches. They kind of look at their watches and they, they look how the light picks it up and they look at the angles and it's it's building a relationship. Yeah. I was driving it. over here today and like I had I was like, oh. and I like grabbed my phone real quick while and not texting and driving, but grabbed my phone from the GPS and was like, you know, taking action Kids, shots. Don't try that at home. No, I'm not a professional. Whatever you do. All right. Take us through, yeah. slowly but surely, and you could describe the different sizing and things like that. But again, what blew me away, the very reason why we have a video on this today is not like, hey, Harris got a watch, there's gonna be a video when everybody gets a watch. It was that this watch takes a journey across three Daniel Craig films, and yet I don't hear a lot of discussion about this watch out there, or a lot of love for it. I think it's because it's not the signature watch you know it's not a it's it's, it's not the that, casino royale play it, of ocean it, it, it's or. not the new titanium it's not the seamaster 300 with the nato strap in the fancy box i mean yep. this is a fancy box but fancy it's not box. you know that fancy box right so right. Uh, we start out in skyfall okay, okay yes. the beginning of the movie he has a planet ocean all right istanbul all of that yep enjoying death whatever we show back up to london okay and he in the i think the first time you see it he's wearing the 38 and a half so okay. we're two millimeters. Left. So what scene does he have the Aquatarian exactly? When we're in London, and the best shot that you can see it is when he, when you first see the Jack Bulldog. Oh yes. And when he's talking about his evaluation. Yeah. Uh, he's sitting there. So you know, it's the introduction of yeah, of him the, and the, Mallory yep. and and all of that. Yeah. Um, and then you really see it also on the um, poster, the Skyfall poster, that that shot oh. of him in the with the gun barrel, yeah. in the tuxedo, and he's yeah. got his arm, he's got the. PPK. Oh, is that that's the Aquatera. That's the Aquatera. So in Skyfall, when he wears the tuxedo, is he wearing, wearing, wearing the Aquatera? The Aquatera. Hmm? Dude, seriously. And Boom. the next time you watch uh, the National Gallery scene with Q, pause it when he gets his radio. Not exactly Christmas, is it? 007 or whatever. Yeah. You see this beautiful bracelet. Wow, I did not know. I, hand on heart, I did not know. Well, that's the 38 and a half. That's not even this watch. Okay. Because I didn't have the polish center. Now, that would, would that have been a little small for you, the 38? Like, not your cup of tea? Well, if you look at my Instagram, mm -hmm. everyone says it should be the 38 and a half uh, because of my, quote, dainty wrist. Um, but, you know, again, I, I go with what I want. Uh, yeah. I'm a big, I know what I want. Yeah. You like, you I, like I a little, little bit of a bulk. I like yeah. a little bit of a bulk. Yeah. Is that because I have a small wrist? Yeah. I like to feel like I have a little bit yeah. more there. 
Um, but, you know, to each their own. I get it. The world. We can do what we want. It looks good. Yeah, right? it, and the size does not look it, overwhelming. No, I, I think the so photos, you know. I think the photos might give a different, against all perception. Right. It's not like I'm wearing the 45, Yeah. you know, casino. Um, so there we are in Skyfall. He yep. wears it at the end uh, in the barber jacket. Yeah. Then we, we move to Spectre. Okay. And picture him in that Prince of Wales, Tom Ford jacket walking across the, the, the rooftops of Mexico, yep. uh, Mexico City. And he's there watching, I've already forgot the guy, Skiara. Skiara. Skiara, yeah. man. Oof. Bottoms up. It's been a long time. Yeah. Bottoms yeah. up. And he's got his gun. And you can see that this oh. 41 and a half just dangling That's there. crazy. It's there. Because dude, again, I seriously have not followed this. No story. one cares about the Aqua Terra. We're, ta we're talking about this. They're all looking at the suit in that picture. Right. And then obviously, Inspector, it's all about the gadget. It's all about the Seamaster with the nano strap. And you can see him. Uh, the best shot of this watch is when he is getting the smart blood by Q. And he's sitting there oh. and he's got his jacket off. He's got the, the blue shirt. Yeah, blue tie. Yes. And, you, and he's got his arm. He's got this arm being done. And he's got his arm on the chair. And you can see the watch. And that's it. Dude, that and is And then cool. he gets, he takes off his watch, right. puts it in his pocket when he's asking Q to make him disappear. Gets the Omega 300. Mm -hmm. Oh, my god! And then you see it, ironically, in this outfit right here at the end of the movie. Because he... Well, he blew up the other watch. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, no bueno, no more. <laughs> so, what do you think uh, the okay. warranty is on so, that? So he's got this in the boat. Mm -hmm. He's got this at the mm -hmm. end when he throws away his mm -hmm. gun. Mm -hmm. The whole nine yards. Does he have this in the very last shot? No, he has that, uh, I think it's a fifth. I'm not a watch expert. It's like a 51, 53, okay. you know, it's got a leather, like a leather yeah, dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. totally okay. different. Wow. So there's, there's a lot of travel time. Now, um, before we go to No Time to Die, because you told me it's in No Time to Die. Who knew? Um, I, I think I think we need for you to do a, a quick costume change. So okay. hold on one second. This is going to be movie magic. All right. Just like that, you, you are definitely more appropriately dressed. No Time to Die-ish. Ish. Ish. We'll go-ish. You definitely have the tie. They get the it. I think everyone watching gets it. They get it. You right? know the scene. You get it. All right. But yeah. tell us the scene that the Aquaterra lives in. Yeah. No so to in all of the uh, No Time to Die footage that we've gotten, you know, all the trailers and everything, obviously Matera has been a really big forefront mm. yes. of all of uh, the promotional material and what we've seen. Really, you can't really see it too much. I mean, when you know it's there, you can see it right. in some of the scenes when he's in the car. Um, but so he's in the Massimo Alba mm -hmm. suit? Yeah, in Matera. Okay, got it. Um, I believe he's also wearing this with the Connolly jacket uh, in some of the behind-the-scenes oh. photos that we've seen in Matera. I believe that is on the watch. I don't you know, send an email to someone else. I, if I'm okay. wrong, I'm wrong. Um, but there was a shot that I believe that um, the official 007 website put out. It's right. a black-and-white photo of Craig and Leia Sado yep. in the DB5. And Craig's got his wrist up, and it's, it's this bad boy right here. Wow. We're easily identified. Easily. Oh my gosh. Easily. All right. So, a little bit of a quiz. And yeah. This is this is all preference discussion. Okay. So, you're jazzed. You, you love the elegance of the watch. You love the fact that it transcends across three Daniel Craig movies. Out of the three movies that this represents, what are you most excited about? Like, are you going to call this the No Time to Die? You know, watch. Is it the Spectre one? Is it the Skyfall one? Like, which which movie? connects with you and that watch i think i think it's probably going to be specter more than anything um yeah. i don't think no time to die i don't think this watch is probably ever going to be quote the no time to die watch. no time to die watch yeah. or i don't think it's ever going to be addressed or mentioned i think again you know we're going to be in jamaica and we have a you know a new titanium beautiful watch mm -hmm. and i think that's the watch for that movie um but i i just i think back to specter um, you know, Spectre was really the first movie I really started like really collecting clothes. Yeah. Um, a lot of fond memories with you and our friends yeah. and stuff that we did with Spectre. And, um, you know, I love that NATO strap watch, but this is in a lot more of the movie than people realize. Yes. And, uh, this is just more dressing like Bond than the planet ocean sometimes. So Absolutely. I, I'm well, gravitating this, to this. So, so I guess the answer to your question is Spectre. I'd be hard-pressed to wear this with a tuxedo. This would look very inappropriate. That would be perfect. It'd I mean, be very on-brand, though, for you if you did wear it. Because <laughs> I'm pushing the envelope. Rough it's, and tumble here. That's what it is. Um, all right. Yeah. So why do you think? I mean, obviously, it's not the go-to watch when people think of a Bond watch. Mm -hmm. But... You must love that uniqueness in and of itself that not everybody has right. the Aquaterra. I, I'm just, I've always been unique or weird, however you want to call it. Um, you know, Burger King, eat like a king. Um, but 
What? Said nobody Said ever. ever. Um, but, you know, I, I like being different. I like yeah. being unique. And I think, you know, I really think with James Bond, the character, right, he's, the movies have made him Mr. Suave and all of that. He wouldn't wear this. Ian Fl- I don't think Ian Fleming's Bond would wear this watch. Hmm. I think your titaniums, your Seamasters, a little more utilitarian. Yeah. Make more sense for the character, and I think maybe maybe that's why they push for that. I, I have no idea. It's just me. This is a little bit more of a dressed up watch. This right. is a dressy watch, and you know, I, Ian Fleming's Bond wasn't Mister Style Icon. Correct. So I, this is different. I Unique. I like that, and and I will say this though. I do looking at that watch in person now. I will say that I could see Daniel Craig as an individual choosing that watch. Mm-hmm. That is his mm-hmm. type of watch, mm-hmm. which I. Almost would guess why it was in yeah. three movies. Guy, guy's got a lot of influence. If only if you had a lot of influence like like that. Can you imagine? There'll, there'll be there'll be there'll be none of that. All right. Well, Harris, thank you so much David, for showing for the watch. Back, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Walking through, what a treat this was to bring the watch and play with Ooh. it. Uh, I'm a little jealous. Uh, but thank you for bringing it in and teaching us. I have a sneaking suspicion that in a few months' time from now there will be. Not with me, but there'll be another video on a watch that oh. maybe I'll be jealous of. And no time to die. Oh. I have no idea. We'll see. Omega, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Anyway. All right. Harris, thank you so David, much. Thank you. For coming. What a treat. He's Thanks, actually guys. here in person, which is crazy. And this has been David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. We'll see you all real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.